Okay, this sergeant over here, black guy, that's Patterson. That's the guy who refused to document anything and threatened to arrest me after so it's a crackhead mine over shard tried to strangle me and it took three guys to pull him off me and he got rid of the witnesses and then he threatened to arrest me asking me how much have you had to drink telling me he's going to arrest me for a drunken disorderly if I insist on pushing the matter and that Zoe had a right to smash my phone and try and strangle me. And you know, six months later and my Adam's apple still hurts. But he says Zoe had a right to do that because he didn't want to be filmed. <laughs> Complaint to internal affairs found no wrongdoing on his part. And I could not get the case referred to a detective. And I still don't have any documentation of it, other than my video of him charging at me and grabbing me around the throat before he took the phone out of my hands and smashed it. And then continued to try to strangle me before the three guys pulled him off. The screen got smashed, but the phone continued to back up the photos that got shot to Google Photos, so I got the video. Now, I believe this is also the guy who whacked me with the piece of panel board then asked me if I could breathe. But I never saw the face. I only saw him from behind. Two nights after George Floyd was killed and broke my nose while I was sleeping on a public easement. This guy pulled his gloves on. He hasn't been doing anything except talking on the phone and talking to people here. When he pulled the gloves on, I was sure he was going to go in the bar and arrest somebody. Or that he had to handle some evidence or something. But everything happened inside the bar, so any need for the gloves would be inside the bar unless they're going to take somebody out. Okay, I'm hearing the cops say he had a wallet, so evidently the guy she was with who they transported, she, she wanted to go back in the bar and look for some of his possessions that may have been left behind or whatever. And the cops stopped her. So you got a van pulls right into the shot and stops. This is definitely a police vehicle. He's looking right at me through the window. I don't know if you can see it because the, the glass is tinted so darkly. But he's looking directly at me and he's deliberately placing his vehicle to where he's blocking my shot of what's going on. So I'm going to move over here behind him. Plus that he stopped there blocking the moving lane of traffic. So he's definitely a police vehicle. Because the cops would have said something to him if he wasn't by now. Uh, you see, now, now he's backing up to block my shot. Now that I moved over this way. So I'm going to move back over this way. Now he's pulling forward again. GDC General David Charlie, N Nancy 99, Florida, expires 521. This 
Mustang is also a police vehicle. Cop just got in at VFX 833. Florida tag did not get the expiration date. It's a white Mustang convertible with a black roof and this looks like it's more or less over now. They're all shaking hands, they're getting ready to leave, I think. Patterson's still over there on the phone. Okay, last personnel leaving the bar now. Gloves coming out of the bar. But all those people who were gathered behind me and screwing with my audio feed, or trying to screw with my audio feed to make sure I couldn't hear what was going on across the street, at least half of them were known to me to be G4S patrol, plainclothes patrols. So they have some sort of directive to do that. <laughs> Oop, I lost the audio for a minute there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, Patterson's been staring directly at me. The whole time he's talking on the phone, and I'm filming his buddies. He's taking my picture with the phone a couple of times between falls. I think I'm going to FOIA that. Now Patterson walked back in the bar. Well, law enforcement and first responders seem to be attriting. This sergeant here is running the show. The one with his, who's facing toward us, but being obscured by the bald-headed one with his back to us, with the glasses on his head. Unit still over there blocking the traffic lane. Okay, now 16034, I know it's Patterson's car. I can't put which officers on which SUV, ATV, here. But we're now down to four cops. Besides the rescue people. The two from the ATVs, Patterson, and I don't see the fourth police vehicle. So I don't know if two of them came in one, in, uh, if Patterson had a passenger, or there's an unmarked around here somewhere that I haven't spotted yet. And we'll see when they leave. But this looks like it's about over. I 
I don't know. Bartender just came out. And grabbed the cop and brought him back in. Now, Patterson's inside the bar. You notice how he left his car with the door ajar. Now, it had been locked up when I got here. He just opened it to get something out of it before he went into the bar. And he left the door ajar while he went into the bar. And that's certainly a violation of procedure. See if I can see what's going on inside the bar. So the big fat bald one comes and he sees me filming and he stands in front of the door so I can't shoot inside. I love their tactics. This cop is now writing down information in the bar. Thank you. There's a woman talking to another customer. And here's a customer who knows his rights. Cop, hey, you can't leave. He said, well, I gave you my statement. I wasn't involved in the fight. The cop says you gotta wait for the detectives. Guy, am I being detained? All right, free to go. See you later. I think that guy must have been watching some YouTube audit videos. Okay, now we're down to three cops here. Patterson's inside, and these two outside. And somebody shut Patterson's door for him because he hasn't come out of the bar. But his door is now shut. 